Welcome, we're diving into the world of leading platforms revolutionizing how organizations collaborate and connect. In this video, a solution architect will walk you through the power of Microsoft Teams. Let's get started. So I'm sharing my screen here showing you the Teams application, desktop client, Windows PC customer device. This is a native Teams deployment, so we don't layer in or overlay any third-party PBXs or services on top of Teams. You are truly using the native Microsoft platform, the PBX, the voicemail. So all of this is truly Microsoft licensing on top of that calling plans for voice. So as you see here in my Teams client, I'm showing you my calls tab in Teams. You'll notice I have a work number right here and then my dial pad. We can use this outbound number for caller ID if you wanted to display a user's number as their own individual phone number or you can outpost a main number for a location or a department. So as far as making outbound calls, uh, you could display that number or it could be a global number for the company basically. The one thing to notice is you'll see some other applications on my desktop here. We do have other integrations for Teams that are things Microsoft can't do, such as compliance call recording. We can provide compliance call recording globally for Microsoft Teams. We have CRM integrations. So you can see a little integrator app right here. This is if you wanted to integrate your Teams voice with a CRM like Salesforce, HubSpot, Zendesk, various ticketing systems. We have an application called Unite for Teams. We can do some CRM integrations, screen pops, call logging, those kind of things. Outside of those other services, if you will, you would really have no applications in your Teams client. It would just be your standard calls tabs in Teams that you probably see today if you use Teams. Some folks might not see a dial pad in their Teams client today, but once you have the right licensing, that dial pad shows up and we apply the calling plan phone number to the dial pad. One thing we want to talk about is again your voicemail and all that stuff will be native inside of Teams. You would get voicemail to email, it comes into your application. The Teams client does provide transcription so you'll see here I get text transcription as well as the voicemail I can play. All of your forwarding and full routing features, auto attendance and call queues and groups that you might be part of, again all these settings if you will, are provided for you in the Teams client. There would be no portal you'd need to log into to configure your forwarding or anything. We are going to go straight into the Teams client here and I'm going to load my calls tab and as you can see it's a standard configuration where inbound calls forward to me or not forwarded at all. Inbound calls come to me, don't need to do anything else. If I can't answer my call, I redirect to voicemail and ring my line for 20 seconds. Pretty much the default setting there. But if I wanted to forward my line to some other number, to my cell phone, to my delegates or call group, so in Teams, I can even set up my own little call group here to redirect my calls to other employees. Again, all native Microsoft Teams functionalities. Now I'll just go back to turn my forwarding off again in my Teams client. All your voicemail is done. But if you wanted to record a greeting, you can do that right there. I will get a call from Microsoft and I can speak my greeting, but what some people do is type it out. It's text to speech, it's a female voice and a little bit robotic, but it sounds pretty good and just plays out that greeting for you. The nice thing is with Teams is when you're out of office, you check off your Outlook out of office. So turn on your automatic replies and it can automatically play your Teams custom greeting for when you're out of office. So you see here I was obviously on vacation, but I can put in a generic out of office in there and every time I go out of office it will play my custom out of office greeting. Turn the Outlook back on, it goes back to my standard greeting. So again, all native Microsoft Teams stuff. I am part of some Teams call queues, ring groups. You'll see up here at the top of my call section it shows me I'm delegates to Brian Green. And Brian has given me the ability to not only answer his calls, but I can even change his call settings as well. So before I was showing you kind of my personal dashboard here of my own call settings. But because I'm a delegate of a couple individuals, I'm able to manage a couple other individuals' calls and how they've managed, how they forward their calls in them, as well as some call queues. So Microsoft Teams considers a hunt group or a ring group. They call it a call queue. And so when the Teams admin portal, the administrators will build out these call queues that you might be part of. Could be a reception call queue, or in my case, I'm part of a solution architects call queue. So from this field here, I can come in here and log out of that group. 
Now again I've been given permission to log out of this queue. Your administrators might create some queues that users can't log out of, but this is a good example of maybe a reception queue where you have two or three receptionists and someone needs to step in temporarily just to take some calls. Anyone can simply go to their settings and teams, go to the queues they're part of, and simply check a box. They're logged in that particular call queue, and now those inbound calls are going to ring into their team's client as well. So that's kind of showing you my team's call queues and that kind of functionality. I think outside of that, that's pretty much the main calling features in Teams. Again, this is all native. We don't do any third-party integrations when it comes to just the voice in Teams. It's truly our phone system routing calls wrapped into Microsoft Teams. We do have some failover ability as well, which would be, we call it our one-click failover. This would normally go to a Teams auto attendant. On a good day, when Teams is up and working just fine, our customers are calling this 215 number here. They're ringing into a Teams auto attendant. But what we're going to do here is configure a backup call flow. Could even be a PSTN number customer might have their own answering service or their own outbound PSTN way to grab a call in an emergency, a cell phone even. So this could be any phone number. In this example, I'm just kind of assuming that if this main number can't ring a Teams auto attendant, we're going to provide a backup auto attendant on our cloud. I won't enable this right now, but I would save that destination basically. Come into this button here, I'll hit save and I'll lock in that number. I might do that for other important phone numbers. I can do that for any number, even a user's number, an executive's number, a customer service inbound number to a queue. It doesn't matter which DIDs. Every one of your numbers in Teams will have that once the failover ability. So once we lock in all those destinations and all of our important numbers, let's say today is the day where Teams is having some issues and we want to enable that disaster recovery on our SIP forwarding. I can just check the box right here, enable all of my individual DID forwards, and then hit the big blue button here, save. And that's going to enable all those destinations to redirect away from Microsoft to those backup destinations. And this button here is kind of like a catch-all. So if you didn't enable forwarding in every one of your individual numbers, I could check this box as well and put a destination right here to kind of catch all the other numbers that Maybe I didn't forward and get them redirected to a destination as well. So that's kind of like the two. And this will always take priority over the forward all. So any individual numbers you forward to different destinations will always take precedence over the forward all button. But then again, once Teams is back up and working, we want to get these calls back into Microsoft. We simply uncheck these buttons here, hit save button, and now all those forwardings are off. We're routing the calls back into Teams. They're hitting your Teams auto attendants and Teams users. So it's just like a little insurance policy for if the Microsoft Cloud were to have some issues and we can't get calls to Microsoft for some reason. You do have a way to come enable your forwarding for individual DIDs and then globally turn on all those forwardings at one time. Outside of, we do have reporting in here as far as your call detail records. We're catching all of your daily CDRs, monthly CDRs, we put them into weekly. So if you need to come and get all your call records that are coming inbound and outbound from our network, outside of that, it's really just we, we push numbers into Teams. So from these various locations, you see we're just kind of synchronizing the Teams locations or providing the phone numbers under each one of these locations here. You know, project manager or our support center or even you as the customer can come in here and look at one of your available phone numbers, go to Upload DIDs. You would just kind of select the phone number you want to push into Teams, and you would basically say, I want this number to be for a user or a voice app, and a voice app would be for like an auto attendant or a call queue. Typically, you're going to put a number in Teams for a user. Once I hit Save, that number is basically pushed into Microsoft Teams, you would configure that right from your Teams admin portal, which would then in turn show up there on your user's dial pad. So really it's the repository, the carrier, the phone provider of the phone numbers. We're pushing these numbers via Operator Connect into Teams. So an administrator on your side can assign these numbers to users and to your Teams call queues. In an emergency, we could always route these calls elsewhere in the case of Microsoft's having some problems. 
We hope you found this video helpful and educational and that it gave you the tools to elevate your communication strategy.